Good morning, everyone. On behalf of IUG, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, CMS External Call History and Voice Quality Combo Takes CX Reporting Next Level, sponsored and presented by Raymond Pearson, Channel Director from Versailles. Thank you for participating in today's webinar and for your continued support in the IUG webinar program. Before we begin, I have three quick housekeeping items to go over. First, today's webinar will be recorded and available for on-demand viewing. Second, a Q&A session will follow today's presentation. All questions will need to be entered in the question window near the bottom of your GoToWebinar screen. Third, there will be a short evaluation that pops up as you exit the webinar. Please make sure to take a minute and let us know what you thought of today's session and what you might like to see going forward. Let's get started. I would now like to turn things over to you, Ray. All right. Thank you so much, Paige. I appreciate that. Uh, I am I am going to uh, poke a little bit of fun at, at your expense. Uh, I just want everybody to know that my name is Ray Pearson. I'm the channel director here at Versailles. I know you look at that and you say that is absolutely Versailles, um, but it is Versailles. Versailles is a different company and they do something a little bit different than we do. So uh, now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and uh, say good morning to everybody. Uh, I appreciate you all joining uh, joining me today. I know that you're busy. And so let's go ahead and get right down to it uh, and see what we'll be covering here today. So, so first, we'll be talking a little bit about customer experience in the contact center and what we have to do in order to enact a customer success or a customer experience strategy. Uh, we'll touch base on Avaya's approach to data and how we can take advantage of that data and obviously, a focus of what we're going to be talking about here today is ECH, or Extended Call History Data. Some people refer to it as cradle-to-grave uh, data. Um, and, and then really, the best way to drive home what we're talking about is to talk about real-life use cases. So we're going to discuss real-world situations where customers have leveraged ECH data to get a sense of customer experience in their contact center environments. So before we get into this and, and dive a little bit deeper, I, I do have a couple of program notes that I want to uh, note here. Uh, typically, when we do these presentations, we stick solely with thought leadership. Um, it's, it's very rare that we actually mention Versailles Service Management, our service, and what we do. Sometimes we might mention it in the very last slide that we do. Um, today is going to be a little bit more product focused, and, and really that is just because of the specificity of what we're covering today. It's very difficult to talk about extended call history data and how you blend that together with voice quality without talking about how we do that a little bit. But hopefully you'll continue to appreciate the fact that we're going to be taking about 20 minutes of your time uh, to lay out uh, an approach to a customer experience strategy and um, you know how it applies to the Avaya ecosystem. So let's go ahead and get started here. The first thing that we need to talk about is what the heck um, a customer experience strategy is. Um, well, according to Forrester, it's a plan that guides the activities and resource allocation required to deliver intended experiences that meet or exceed customer expectations in accordance to the goals of your organization. And um, for the purposes of our conversation, the contact center is the hub of activities and resources. And really what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what was the customer experience as it came through my series of activities um, and uh, being in in interacted with with my resources. So, um, the, the measurement that you're looking for is really specific to your, your company, right? It can be what's, what's important to us. It could be any of these things that are listed here. Consistency of treatment, was it, did I have the appropriate skilled resources assigned to a particular engagement? So um, while it varies from organization to organization what you're trying to get to, it's really about having a way to measure data. So what does that look like and what does it mean? How do we find the answers that we're looking for, whether it's one of these three items or something different? Well, as, as you probably guessed, it all comes down to data. 
And uh, frankly, the more data that we can get our hands on, the better. Um, I, I love this uh, little cartoon here because I'm sure this is the way that a lot of us feel. And we've actually heard this from time to time from customers where it's like, oh my gosh, I've looked at all of this information and you know, I've gone through the charts and the, and the graphs and I can't make any sense out of it. So, hey, you know, <laughs> let's go ahead and just go to the bar and get snockered. Um, and uh, this, this is really the challenge, right? Because it's all about the data. But being overwhelmed with the data isn't going to get us anywhere. So what we need is to be able to turn that data into something that means something, uh, where we can take that and turn it into a business benefit so that we can figure out what's going on. What we've heard is that more and more companies are struggling with this, especially now that teams are operating from anywhere and everywhere, they're really struggling with, well, has that changed the customer experience? So if they felt like they had a good grasp on it prior, now they're looking at this and going, oh, man, uh, I don't even know uh, if uh, our customer experience has changed because everybody is in different places. The good news for those of you that are committed to the Avaya ecosystem is, is that Avaya generates a ton of data. Those of you that are familiar with Versailles and some of the presentations that we've done, you'll be familiar with the slide. We, we use it because um, when we're speaking to an Avaya audience, it really is key for us to talk about this because this isn't actually true for all UC and CC environments. Um, not all of these ecosystems generate the types of data that Avaya ecosystems do. So Versailles as a cloud-based solution, I mean, we love this data because we can eat it up and we can apply smarts to it that make it useful. All of the data sources that you see here can be turned into useful bits of information which informs you of customer experience and helps you solve problems with customer experience in your environment. So um, obviously we're gonna be talking a little bit about um, CMS uh, ECH data here today, um, but the, the simplest thing for us to do is to just walk through some uh, case studies with you so that you can see how um, if you take that data and apply some context to it, that you can really take your uh, CX game to the next level. Okay, so our first use case that we're going to talk about here regarding CMS ECH data is, is a really simple one, and it's one that we're hearing quite a bit, especially from large financial and healthcare institutions. Uh, this customer had a major concern. They used ECH data all the time through Contact Analyzer. They did it mostly to research customer complaints, right? So did a customer experience what they said they were experiencing, just looking at the base physicality of the segments of the call. And they also used Contact Analyzer to do some standard repetitive reporting that they had to do for compliance purposes. Well, the problem, and some of you may know this already, is that um, browser support for Flash is coming to an end in the vast majority of browsers that you're all familiar with and that, more importantly, your security folks are familiar with. And, and while there are a number of workarounds, uh, the, the workarounds for this particular customer just weren't anything they could leverage from a security perspective. They couldn't use a browser that wasn't well known in the industry. They couldn't shut off their browsers to not get updates. And so they were really in a pickle because they have ECH uh, stream turned on, they have that feed going, and they really needed uh, a way to be able to do those ad hoc uh, reporting traces so that when a customer came in and said, hey, um, you know, I had a, a particular experience, they could still go in and validate what was happening. And so what we did is we worked with the customer and we said, hey, we can take that ECH feed as well. Um, you don't have to get rid, you know, Contact Analyzer can still continue to, um, to, to capture that data and you can continue to utilize it through the other interfaces. But when it comes to the people that need to quickly run ad hoc reports, we, we can help you out with that. And so um, they have the ability to uh, search all of the ECH fields. They can run this report um, in, in both an ad hoc fashion or to have it delivered to them for those standard reports that they 
um, that they do all the time. You can search under a particular call terminations and dispositions. And, and of course, um, you can search for as many or as little of, of these fields as you want. And so now this customer can leverage ECH data to do simple things like validate a user experience. So this is an, an actual example that we used as part of the proof of concept. A customer had complained indicating that they had a horrible experience. And when the data was returned, it was really simple. The customer wasn't telling the truth. Uh, the customer had called in and hadn't even given the vector enough processing time to process um, his or her call, much less get to an agent and have a poor experience. And so um, this is the simplest methodology of how you're going to leverage the CMS ECHB to quickly resolve those CX-related uh, complaints or those research um, uh, opportunities. But let's go ahead and talk about how we can really bump this up and take this to the next level. So this particular customer is a large insurance company and they had a slightly different issue. They wanted to be able to understand if an agent's station was, report, was reporting poor call quality, and they wanted to be able to do it more quickly than they could do today. So the problem in an agent environment, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, is, is that um, the agent IDs don't always match the station IDs, and call quality is reported by the station ID. And so what these engineers had to do is they had to cross-reference station data and agent numbers. If they felt as though they had a call quality concern from an agent perspective, uh, they would have to then cross-reference where was that agent logged in at this, oh, they were in this particular station, okay, great. Now let me go take a look at that data. And while they could eventually get to the answer, it was taking them a long time and it was a very frustrating experience. And so, um, in addition to the reports that we have available that you can um, have delivered to you or run at ad hoc, we also have the ability to just simply do searches in the uh, raw ECH stream. And so this is an example of, um, you know, th this, this is a pull down menu in which you can get as specific or as broad as you want. In this particular case, they needed to find out what was happening with this particular agent. So here's what you're gonna see is the interesting contextual piece to it here. Okay, so you'll notice here this ECH data in which there are call segments, right? Which tell you what the experience of the customer was, it was transferred to another agent, they were put on hold, all of that information that you're probably familiar with if you utilize ECH and if you're not, all of that information is in there, the handling of the call is in there. But what we've done is we've actually flown uh, voice quality data into the ECH stream. So now you can take a look at this and be able to identify, okay, um, I, I know who the agent was, but I don't really know what station they were logged into. Well, Versailles Service Management already has that information and we can just simply use the, the processing power of the cloud to make those matches for you. So this particular customer is able to look at the CMS ECH data and immediately link it to voice quality. And that, that helps them from having to do this needle in a haystack search or take a long period of time. So they're very quickly able to get in there and identify where they have call quality issues with agents without having to do that cross-reference check. Um, and obviously they've increased some operational efficiencies because they no longer have to do that. Um, and that allows them to uh, not only improve the customer experience, but also improve the end user experience for those agents because they know what the problem is and they know it quickly. So having the ECH data and the ability to combine it with voice quality information, that's often enough to be able to solve complex customer and end user experience issues, as I mentioned. But sometimes you need to be able to look at the nitty gritty information and do it in a intelligent way and do it in a way that doesn't allow you to be overwhelmed by that data. So this particular customer, um, you know, they had a need to dive into the data on, on occasion. And so 
What, what they were able to do is they were able to leverage Versailles AI powered dashboards. So we have AI powered dashboards that do the analysis and say, hey, we've looked at all of your data over the period of 24 hours or 12 hours or whatever it is that you want to look at. Here's where you should look for information. And because we're combining the ECH feed uh, those AI powered dashboards and the information related to call quality and we're putting that information all together it allows the customer to identify problems quicker so you can see here that we have the information related uh, to the ECH feed but then we also have this detail information so for example um, I'm looking at call quality information related to that agent call. I can take a look and also look at configuration data, and we'll talk about that in a minute, to see am I causing some of my own problems because I have things misconfigured. And then the ability to look at the reported stream for the entire length of that stream as opposed to an average or an average of an average really allows you to quickly uh, get down into uh, the areas that help you identify the cause of thorny issues. Um, and then you'll notice that um, while we can have our data exported to Excel so that you can do all sorts of additional um, uh, searching and cross-referencing, this particular customer found that all of the contextual information that we bring in um, that related to the agent experience and the customer experience, that there really wasn't any need for them to export uh, to Excel and do that for their search because, again, uh, as a cloud-based solution, leveraging all that big data analytics, a lot of the heavy lifting is done. So in those rare moments where they had to dive in past what they see in voice quality information and uh, the ECH feed, they were able to get in there look at that stuff very quickly and, and I'll show you a couple of other things that kind of tie that all together which really uh, help you key in to uh, CX related issues. So what we've shown here so far is, is that the ECH feed can be powerful, right, because it has a lot of great information, but how you use that feed and what data you bring in to surround that feed is really what drives context and helps you understand all of the elements that drive customer experience. Because it's not just about, did they get transferred? How many times did they get put on hold? That information is important um, for sure. And, uh, and it, it, it informs a large portion of customer experience. But really, more importantly, um, did we cause any problems? Do I have particular agents that have call quality issues that are contributing to that experience? And can I put those pieces of the puzzle together and do it quickly? So ECH data, very, very powerful as long as you surround it with additional information. So what about the other data that I mentioned in, those, in that slide that showed all of the data points? Well, we've already talked about a couple of them, but I wanted to share with you a couple of bonus use cases here to show you um, how we can continue to utilize those data sources to provide some context in the environment. So more and more companies are struggling with the lack of visibility that they can receive now that most agents are working from home. So that was the case with this particular BPO. Um, and again, this is where the Avaya architecture can really help us because there's a ton of data still available for agents that are authenticating through a VPN. And if your agents are authenticating to the SBC, Avaya has a wonderful trick where you can insert the SBC um, as a reporting element in the RTCP stream so that you can get good visibility at, um, on both sides of uh, that, that agent experience, right? I can see what I'm seeing as the call comes in and I can report what I see. And of course, we already have a lot of visibility in the uh, corporate network. So, that great data combined with um, our big data engine allows VSM to do that heavy lifting. And so this is an example of that AI powered dashboard that I mentioned where we say, hey, um, we already know what best of class voice quality is because we can 
benchmark you across our entire install base. And, and here are the areas in which you need to focus. Here's where we see uh, that your header packets are not tagged for voice routing, so that voice gets um, the best routing. Here's where we see areas in which packets are being stripped. And then, hey, you want to look at that from an agent perspective? No problem. We've got that information right here for you. You can look at that from a contact center perspective. So what was interesting about this particular customer was they were wanting to hone in on those remote agents, right? Because they said, hey, now everybody's working from home. Uh, that wasn't the case before. We're not really quite sure what's going on from that perspective. So they were wanting to identify which agents were causing customer experience issues due to their you know, poor wireless or internet connections. Um, but the funny thing was, is that as they started looking at the additional data sources that Versailles um, you know, kind of pulls together for them, uh, they were able to identify that they actually had um, a configuration problem in their corporate environment. So this was an example of a uh, gateway that was um, causing problems uh, right here because the gateway was misconfigured and wasn't tagging packets. So if an agent had poor call quality because of their poor connection at home, uh, corporate was making it a whole lot worse because this was a gateway in which calls came through. This was where um, agents would grab dial tone, so on and so forth. And so um, even though they went down one road looking for a particular problem, uh, they ended up going down another road and realizing that, oh, um, that's the reason why Versailles flies in related information that's not really part of the reporting stream. RTCP does not report um, what's going on from a configuration perspective. You know, do you have it plugged in? Uh, it, it, it's really that kind of basic stuff. Do you have it configured correctly? Um, so um, anyway, it was, a, it was this was a really great case study because they were able to um, not only identify those remote agents that were impacting voice, uh, voice quality, but they were also able to identify where they were contributing to uh, their own problems. Finally, I'll leave you with, uh, with this here. Um, a, a case of mining data to provide information to help with CX-related issues in the environment. So um, this particular customer recognized that they were not providing the best customer experience. And instead of paying an organization to go through all of their numbers, whether it was machine helped or not, uh, they had like 2,000 active vectors. Uh, and the idea of paying uh, another organization to go in there and uh, log customer experience by actually going through all the menus, while they recognized that there was value in that, they basically came to us, they're an existing customer, and they said, you know, is there any way that you can help us with this? Because um, we know that there's information that you're collecting that at least maybe we can uh, eliminate some of that manual labor. And then if we uh, work with a third party company to go through, we at least know where to focus them as opposed to looking at everything. And of course the answer for us was yes. Um, so uh, what, what we did is uh, we helped them look at uh, their call flows and identify where there were logical faults within their call flows. Um, so they could gather this information, uh, they could look at it, and they could identify where uh, there were problems. Uh, we also were able to take a look at um, not only the ECH data to um, uh, validate that for them, but they were able to combine the information that you've seen today along with things like analysis of audio resources. Do you have them mirrored appropriately? If you're using audio groups, are they configured appropriately? Um, information on call flow events that don't generate alarms, like um, if there is a call flow that asks for an announcement to be played, for example, and that announcement isn't available. Well, that's not an alarm in the system. It just gets logged as a log. Well, they were able to look at that information and see it um, and understand where they had those customer experience affecting issues. Uh, they also were able to look at capacity management, like I mentioned, not only just in terms of announcements, but in, but in terms of uh, DSPs, were the DSPs in the right place? 
what was happening from a bandwidth utilization perspective. So um, as a result, the customer was able to eliminate inconsistent call treatment um, and uh, make sure that they always had updated call flows. So as they made changes, because of course they did, they saw where they had those logical faults, uh, these diagrams got updated automatically and they were able uh, to always have an updated version. And it really just allowed them to streamline uh, their focus. So when they went to that third party company, they were able to say, look, these are the ones we really want you to look at. These are the ones that we want some additional um, uh, insight into. So um, all of the data points that I'm mentioning here in these last couple of bonus use cases, uh, they are all things that affect the customer experience. And most of them just aren't reported anywhere uh, where you can utilize it. And, and that's really where Versailles Service Management comes into play, leveraging all of that data and putting it together in a way that makes contextual sense. That's how you're able to take your CX to the next level. All right, let's wrap this up here. So um, today we talked about that in order to manage your customer experience, you've got to have excellent measurement. And more importantly, you need to take that data and measure it and massage it in a way that makes sense so that you can use it. And the good news is, is that those of you that are committed to the Avaya architecture, it generates a ton of data that can be used. Today we focused a bit on ECH data. Uh, we talked about how to link ECH data and voice quality data together. Um, and then we also talked about things like configuration data and capacity related data to help you understand um, a little bit more about how that stuff affects CX. It's just a tiny fraction of the data that can be leveraged. And, and that's really what we focus on is taking all that data and returning it so that customers and yeah, business partners can get deep informed insight and so that you can benchmark your CX to others. So I'm gonna leave you here with this last slide as we open it up for questions. Um, if you recognize yourself in any of these call outs here, please feel free to uh, reach out to us. Uh, we do work very, very closely with VIA. Um, if you've got um, any, any, um, any of these challenges that we mentioned here today, uh, please uh, do, do reach out. And I appreciate you all joining us here. I appreciate you allowing me to speak to you for a little bit. I'm gonna turn it over now to Paige, and I think we've got time for uh, a handful of questions here. I thank you all for your time. Yeah, we do. Um, so the first question is, does a via charge for ECH to be added to the CMS? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, there, there is a fee to turn on that stream uh, if it's not turned on today. Um, for, for a lot of customers, they're actually surprised when they go and look at it and they find that it's actually already turned on. Um, a lot of customers have paid for that to be turned on. They just don't leverage it. The next one says, is an on-premise solution available? Uh, that's actually a really good question. And, and for us, the answer is no. Um, we can't do the big data analytics um, and we can't uh, do the artificial intelligence if we're on-prem because uh, that would only be focused on a localized database and you have to worry about how much data you're collecting and how much processing power you're using. Um, so we're cloud from day one, but um, we're an outbound only connection. We have a large install base in both financial and healthcare sectors. Uh, we have yet to meet a security protocol uh, that we haven't passed. Good, good question. What is the difference between ECH data and call rec table data? And I'm sorry, between, C um, what was the last part? Um, ECH data and call rec table data. I am uh, clearly an old man at this point because I still didn't understand what the second part of that was, but uh, um, uh, let, me, let me try. Out on your end too to see it um, under the question. Okay. Yeah, let me look at it here real quick here. So um, ECH data, Boy, that is really small for me to see here. Um, but here's what I'll, I'll say. Um, ECH data is really about cradle to grave management. 
It is every single um, handling interaction for that particular conversation that you've had with your customer. How many times they were put on hold, um, you know, whether or not they were transferred to another agent, if they ended up um, someplace else uh, transferred via call trees, those sorts of things. Um, it is really considered uh, the cradle to grave standard in the Abaya architecture. Um, does Versailles have any documentation on setting up ECH? Um, yes, actually we do. Um, so um, if, if you're a customer of ours and, and you, you would like to work with us in leveraging VSM uh, to uh, utilize your ECH feed, we certainly can help you with that. Will this be able to capture cradle to grave for via external applications that calls flow um, through as well, such as experience portal that has the call going back and forth through communication manager, through session manager to experience portal and back into vector processing for CM. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so in, in general, um, as long as, uh, CMS, because ECH is really a CMS-based um, feed. As long as CMS is aware of that interaction, it will be reported. It does depend on how you're configured, um, and, and it, does, uh, it does depend on what information is uh, being fed through CMS. So uh, your, your mileage will vary there, uh, depending on how you're set up. But it, if, it, if it gets into the ECH feed, uh, we'll be able to see it and you'll be able to report on it. Is the information process real time, near real time, or end of day? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, the, the best um, description for that is going to be near real time. Again, in, in Versailles, uh, that information is being collected um, all the time. Um, but some of that data is in log files. So near real time is the, is the best way to describe uh, the way that ECH works. What are the benefits of Versailles versus something like Microsoft Power to create reports with the Avaya data? Ah, um, well, the, the benefits are really what I showed in the presentation, which is that um, we're going to provide you with context. So again, um, the ECH data feed, you, you could utilize other database sort of um, platforms like what, like what you just mentioned to do that reporting, but it doesn't provide you with any context. It just is that information that says, yes, this call was answered and then it was transferred and this person was put on hold and then four minutes later they were put on hold. But it doesn't actually paint a total picture for you um, about uh, customer experience. It only really gives you that one myopic view. Um, do you offer a trial period to evaluate the value before purchasing? So, so typically um, we will do that, um, but we, we do uh, work with customers on a case-by-case -case basis. We, we want our um, customers to have a partnership with us, so typically um, we want the customer to have some skin in the game, um, but uh, yes, we have been known to do trials and proof of concepts for sure. Can the ECH feed be delivered to a data warehouse? Yeah, that, that is a, um, a question for probably an Avaya expert. Um, what I can tell you is, is that the feed exists and if you can tap the socket, uh, to gather that information, uh, there's no reason why you couldn't store that data someplace else. How does Versailles get copies of all the data from each adjunct? Also, does Versailles calculate MOS scores when processing, or are you pulling that from some other source? Uh, fa fantastic question. So, um, so. Most voice quality information is um, delivered via RTCP, 
So that is a completely separate data stream. And that's really the point of what we're trying to drive home here is um, leveraging the ECH data is great, um, but being able to combine it and match it up with a completely other reporting source um, is really what drives home the value. Um, in terms of how we get the data from each adjunct, um, that information is collected via a, a myriad of ways. In some cases, Versailles is the receptacle of information that gets generated. And in other um, areas, we're actually querying those solutions, not unlike um, how a tier four technician might query those solutions to get that information. It's just that we can do it a thousand times a second as opposed to uh, you know, a, a handful of times every minute. Have you worked with the Avaya Oceana architecture? Yes, um, we, we have. Um, what I will say is, is that uh, Oceana is a work in progress, and that is just simply um, working with the DevConnect team. Uh, you know, that process is pretty thorough and typically lags behind the delivery of the product infrastructure, uh, you know, to the customer base. Um, but uh, yes, we absolutely um, have worked in environments and we anticipate uh, full um, support of Oceana and uh, certification through the DevConnect process. Does this tool help identify the customer experience in an intelligent IVR experience portal to identify how customers are navigating through the IVR? Yeah, so, so we get information through Experience Portal a few different ways. Again, if it's set up um, and the CMS is aware of it, obviously that information gets transferred in. But we recognize that Experience Portal is one of those um, Avaya technology stacks that sometimes is blind to customers. So we actually query uh, the Experience Portal separately. Uh, we have a series of reports that let you know um, what's happening in, term of, in terms of the applications that you're running, the number of calls that are running through that, um, and we have a contextual dashboard as well that can show you the health of the services, uh, the trunks that are connected in the Experience Portal if you've got them connected directly. Um, so we, we get insight into Experience Portal a few different ways. But again, if um, the CMS ECH feed is familiar with that, then obviously we report on that as well because, again, it's in the feed, so we utilize it. And then it looks like the final question is, is there focused training currently offered on using the data presented to Versailles via ECH? Yeah, so um, existing customers uh, should be familiar with our customer success program and uh, we can help them uh, through that process. And uh, if you are a potential customer that is interested in finding out different ways to leverage the ECH data, you can just reach out to me and uh, we'll hook you up with the right person and, and make sure that, uh, um, that we can get you squared away. Okay. One Fantastic more. question. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> such a helpful feature. Why would this not be enabled by default? Oh, well, <laughs> um, so uh, again, this is probably a question that's um, uh, more appropriate for Avaya, but um, it, it, initially it was con considered an enhancement, right? Um, so, um, and you had to figure out where you were going to uh, warehouse all of that data. ECH data um, generates gigs of data um, every minute, and so it's a challenge. And so typically, the ECH feed was considered a premium add-on because you had to find some sort of um, of way to deal with that data. And uh, there there is a company that's no longer in business anymore. When I worked at a business partner, I actually had to help a customer um, use this third-party application to handle the ECH feed data. You know, now with the um, the advent of uh, cloud technologies and uh, the ability to take large sums of data and not really worry about it, um, I think the uh, evolution of the ECH feed and how customers are going to use it, I think that's going to uh, to change over time. It's like one more question. Can this be hosted in private instance of an AWS or Azure cloud? 
Yeah, so so we're actually based um, in in the Azure cloud. Um, we can talk to you about your need um, to you know keep uh, data in a particular uh, geo region or something along those lines. Um, but um, you know, again, as a cloud-based business, we need to be able to drive benefit across our customer base. So we don't typically do uh, private engagements like that. It looks like that is it. All right. Well, awesome. I think that was the most questions we've ever received. Um, really, really appreciate it and totally insightful questions. Great stuff. That was awesome. Thank you to Ray from Versailles for taking the time to speak to us today. As a reminder, this webinar was recorded and it will be available for on-demand viewing by the end of the day. You can find out more about the IAUG webinar program visiting iaug.org slash learn. Please make sure to complete the short evaluation that will pop up as you exit the webinar and let us know how today's session went. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.